Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be talking about how iron affects Hashimoto's symptoms as well as your thyroid hormone levels. In fact, I'm going to give you uh, three or four ways iron does that and I'm going to give you one way you probably wouldn't expect but is really, really important. So if you have Hashimoto's and you are still not feeling good despite taking medication, despite your TSH uh, looking okay, like you have brain fog, depression, anxiety, then I think you're going to find today's video very helpful, so let's get into that. So let's start with a real quick explanation of how thyroid hormones are made. Very simply, you have your hypothalamus, which makes something called TRH. That sends a signal to your pituitary gland, which makes TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. And then that, of course, contacts the thyroid gland, and thyroid gland tries to make T4 and T3. Now, the, ma the vast majority of what your thyroid gland makes is uh, T4, not T3. Uh, most of the T3, about 80% that you see uh, on blood work, etc., has got to be made outside the thyroid gland through a process called conversion. And, and remember that because iron affects that as well. In hypothyroidism, what happens is you can't make thyroid hormones, right? And that's evidence on labs because your TSH goes high and your free T4 or T4 is low. Now, Hashimoto's, of course, what it likes to do is blow up this stuff called thyroid peroxidase and thyroglobulin. Now, thyroid peroxidase is the, the enzyme that you use to make T4 and T3. That's the enzyme in your thyroid gland that you have to have. It has to work correctly for you to make T4. That's why as Hashimoto's blows that up over time, uh, you lose your ability to make thyroid hormones and thus you become hypothyroid. Well, iron, I'm just going to jump ahead, iron is a necessary essential cofactor for thyroid peroxidase. What that means is if you have iron deficiency, your ability to make T4 and T3 is automatically going to go down. Now, if you can imagine you've got Hashimoto's on top of that, that could be a double whammy and that could produce a lot of different symptoms. Now, I have to tell you that low iron symptoms and low thyroid symptoms overlap a lot. So for example, low thyroid Hashimoto's hypothyroidism symptoms include things like fatigue, weight gain, hair loss, uh, brain fog, anxiety, depression, right, joint and muscle pain. Well, let's move over and talk about iron for a second, right? Now iron, here's the thing you have to know about that. Iron is an essential mineral, you can't live without it. It is a necessary ingredient to make hemoglobin, right? And hemoglobin is how you carry oxygen through your red blood cells to all the tissues of your body. Uh, iron is also necessary to make ATP. Now, ATP is the energy currency that all your cells have to make for themselves in order to stay alive. Iron is also necessary to make the neurotransmitters dopamine and serotonin. So what does all that mean? Well, if you are iron deficient or iron insufficient, and I'll explain that in just a second, you can have a lot of the same symptoms as low thyroid. You can have fatigue. You can have low energy. You can have low stamina. You can have depression, mood alteration, brain fog, right? So there's a lot of overlap with that. And the reason I'm bringing that up is you better make sure you're working with someone that can understand the difference between low thyroid, low iron, and what to do if you've got either one of them, right? Okay. So with Hashimoto's, you know, you do thyroid peroxide antibodies, thyroid globule antibodies. How do we find out if someone has enough iron though, right? Well, you do a test called ferritin. Now, ferritin is the best test for iron. It reflects 22% of your body's iron. And that's a little weird because if you look at most people's blood work, you'll see a test that says serum iron, and you might think, oh, that's, that's the test you use. But it really isn't because that test, the serum iron, only reflects 1% of your body's iron. So it's kind of useless, right? So we look at ferritin. Now, ferritin ranges on blood work are, are kind of all over the place. And I really don't like those ranges. I mean, if you look at it, you know, the range for women is like 15 to 150, right? And men is like 30 to uh, 400. I mean, those are really wide ranges and I could talk about why they're like that, but I like to use the following ranges, right? Everybody always wants to know, well, what's a, what's a good level of ferritin? These are my guidelines. For women that are having menstrual cycles, we like to see a ferritin of at least 50 nanograms per milliliter, right? For women who are perimenopausal or menopausal rather, we like to see levels around 100 to 125. For an adult man, we should see like 150 or greater, right? Now, the thing is, <laughs> you look at most Hashimoto's patients, I'll tell you, most Hashimoto's patients do not have good ferritin levels, right? Their ferritin is typically 30 or less. And guess what that's probably causing? Fatigue, brain fog, depression because of its effects on ATP, hemoglobin, being able to make dopamine and serotonin. But those people also have Hashimoto's, which likes to create those exact same symptoms. So it's really important <laughs> to make sure that you're understanding how to test for each, how do you treat each, because I'll just kind of jump ahead for a second. If someone's ferritin is low or below those levels I gave you, our question is why, right? The question is not, okay, how much iron should I take? 
we'll, you know, you'll get to that. But we had to figure out why is the ferritin low? And let me tell you, there's a bunch of reasons why it could be low. It could be malabsorption. It could be blood loss. It could be inflammation. We don't know. You've got to do the right digging and find out because just to like say, oh, your ferritin's low. I give you iron. I do functional medicine. That's like the most elementary school way of doing functional medicine. Really what people ought to be doing, in my opinion, is tracking down what could be causing that, right? Because if you don't figure out what's causing it, whatever's causing it uh, could be causing you more and more severe problems and you think everything's fine. It's like, it's like saying, well, I'll dye my hair as I get gray and I won't grow old. Well, that's not going to work, right? Okay, so we talked a little bit about uh, what iron does, how you make thyroid hormones, and one way that iron affects thyroid hormone levels, and that's through uh, kind of down-regulating or making you not make uh, thyroid hormones because of not being able to use thyroid peroxidase. Well, another way, a second way, that iron affects your thyroid hormone levels, and this is kind of experimental in animal models, but it can decrease your ability to convert T4 into T3, right, which is going to produce low thyroid symptoms, because if you don't have enough hormones floating around, there's not enough to use and you're going to get some of the symptoms we talked about. Now a third way, which is, I don't hope this is easy to understand, a third way is that iron deficiency can blunt that hypothalamus pituitary thyroid circuit we were talking about. Iron tends to blunt the responses to TRH and TSH. So what does that produce? Well, a blunted response means you're not going to get enough hormones. So iron can affect uh, hormone levels, the thyroid hormone levels in those three ways. And we've already talked about how it can overlap with Hashimoto's symptoms, right? You can get the double whammy. But let me give you another way that you might not know that how iron affects uh, Hashimoto's specifically. There is research that shows that iron deficiency causes an increased prevalence of thyroid antibodies, both at, on large groups and individually. Now, that might be a little surprising, and we don't really know why, so we could posit a lot of things. But it becomes doubly important, right, to make sure that you've got your iron levels figured out. Are they low? If they are, why? Because if you have Hashimoto's, <laughs> low iron can make you make more thyroid antibodies, believe it or not. And low iron can make you have more of the symptoms that you don't like, which is brain fog, anxiety, depression, right? So just remember, and I'm going to close it out with this. You've got to ask yourself and make sure your doctor is asking this, why is your ferritin low, right? You can't just, I mean, I guess you can do it, but I don't think you should. You can't just say, oh, my ferritin's a 20, that's too low, I'll take iron. Okay, great, how much iron? How should you take it? What will maximize absorption? What do you do if that doesn't work? Your doctor has to know all of that stuff, right? So please make sure you're working with someone that understands all these things we've talked about today, right? So let me review for you. Here are the ways that iron affects Hashimoto's symptoms and thyroid hormone levels. Number one, iron, iron is necessary for thyroid peroxidase. So if you don't have it, you may have a hard time making thyroid hormones. Second thing is it affects your ability to convert T4 into T3. Third way is it blunts your hypothalamus pituitary responses. And then the fourth way that iron affects Hashimoto's is that iron deficiency actually increases the odds of having high thyroid antibodies, which means thyroid autoimmunity, which is the thing you're trying to get rid of in Hashimoto's, right? That's the thing you're trying to go after. So that's a lot of information. I hope you guys found that helpful. Feel, feel free to rewind and watch it again. Uh, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.